Good morning everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we are cleaning out some more Corels. Uh, this is the third day that I'm cleaning Corels out and we are gonna start our fifth one here. So it's taken a decent little chunk of time to clean this slop out, but uh, we're on the fifth one already. I hope to get three Corels done today. We'll see how far we actually end up getting. We already took the Corel out. This is our younger heifer pen. This is kind of like the second youngest pen that we have out in the feedlot. We do chase them out to our shoot system right here. So they just hang out here all day. That works pretty good. We want to be as quick as possible cleaning these corrals out because there is no uh, water there. There's no food for those animals. They just got to hang out until we're done. Usually scoop the slop out though. It doesn't take more than a few hours. With that, we're gonna start their corral. I always start by scraping all the manure away so we can back in there with that manure wagon. manure wagon in already we were hauling already for a couple days so we got to overnight this wagon a couple of things we do we run it for a super long time after it's empty just to try and shoot out all the excess moisture away from those beaters and as well as that chain we don't want anything freezing tight it's always the worst once you want to get going in the morning and stuff is frozen it just wastes your time so we also leave that gate about a foot open just so it doesn't freeze down but before I put any manure in there in the morning I always lift the gate up and spin the beaters up and run the floor chain when it's completely empty yeah before that first load just to kind of break everything loose because even if we do run it for an extra five minutes at the end of the day every day it still seems to freeze up these beaters for example yesterday i turned it on and it sold the tractor out a couple times before it started going just because they were so frozen so we'll see how it goes today so the first thing i'm gonna do is turn the pto on try to get those beaters to spin and rev up the tractor a little bit and then slowly turn it on. Okay, those things fired right up it looks like. Now we're gonna open that gate. Move that thing up and down a couple times. And now we're gonna run that floor chain as well. Well, that pre-run went pretty good there. Now we're gonna start loading the wagon. going up to dump a bucket in the wagon you always got to make sure that the payloader is level first don't do it when you're tilted like sideways like we are right now you want to kind of level off and then you can lift the bucket nice and high it's kind of a wheel loader thing uh, it's pretty tippable this piece of machinery just because it's articulating and you get that bucket all that weight super high uh, you can put this thing on its side Knock on wood, our dairy farm has never had that happen. I hope it never does, because that'll be one, super dangerous for the operator, and two, pretty expensive in terms of damaging one of these wheel loaders. But uh, it's just something you're always cautious of. Even when feeding cows, you're, you're thinking about it whenever you're lifting something with some weight with one of these wheel loaders and you're turning, it always pops to your head. Sometimes it's a close call. 
you have butterflies in your stomach. But uh, for the most part, we've been pretty good here. We're gonna take that first load out to the field. It's about a kilometer down the road, pretty close. All right, we're gonna start dumping. We're using GPS just to evenly spread it over the field. But yeah, it's just a pretty simple machine to start up. PTO on first, then you open that gate, rev it all the way up. That gate's gonna open up for us. And then you just turn the floor chain on. The one thing you gotta kinda watch out for with this spreader, uh, you don't wanna push the manure too quick through those vertical beaters out the back with the floor chain. Most newer tractors will have the adjustable flow in the hydraulics. So you can spin it up to put more hydraulic flow to them. And then that chain, that floor chain is going to spin a lot faster. But you don't want to push the manure through those beaters too quick. Because you will plug those beaters. And it is not a good time trying to get the manure out of there. So better to take it a little bit easy and not put yourself through that kind of struggle. But yeah, that's all there is to it. The tractor is going to steer itself all the way to the end of the field. I have the GPS set to about 25 feet width. And that's kind of how wide the spreader spreads manure. It does spread probably like 35 to 40 feet, but those last five feet on both sides are pretty light. So we try to get a little bit of overlap there. And we also try not to drive over the manure that we spread on the last pass. Just we don't want to be driving over that just because it's going to make the tractor a lot dirtier than it has to be. I'm also looking through that mirror right there. I can see when it's spreading. I can see when it's empty. There is mesh at the front of this manure wagon, but it's completely packed full of solid manure and I can't see it all anymore. So we gotta kind of rely on those mirrors. Well, that's another corral done. That's number five. We're gonna head to the next one just over there. So we gotta grab the heifers from the pen, put them back and then take the new ones out again. Yep. And just like that, we're ready to open up the second corral of the day before lunch. It's going good so far little luck we'll get well into number one here maybe finish it and get into uh, number nine i'm kind of procrastinating on this corral right here you can see there's almost a slough in there We're almost done our second corral for the day. There's just a couple more scoops right there we gotta throw in the wagon. But I noticed something while I was scooping away along the side of the fence here. Look at that. It's a collar off one of the heifers, an activity collar. It's always good to find these if they do come off. They're like 150 bucks a piece probably. So good thing we saw that, pretty lucky. It wouldn't really matter going through the spreader it would break it obviously but it wouldn't hurt anything and that piece of metal that wouldn't be good if it got out in the field maybe it goes through the chopper and gives us some issues down the road but let's leave it there for now finish this corral off figured i'd give you guys a quick walk around to this manure spreader i don't think i've ever really done that it is a bunning 230 lowlander wide body Bunning is a company from the UK and uh, they build a pretty solid manure spreader. So I believe this is a 23 ton manure spreader. It's got a pretty nice suspension system underneath. So if you drop a big bucket of manure in there, 
it's pretty soft on the on the unit drives over the road and bumps pretty smooth as well doesn't bounce too much obviously a twin axle uh, model here neither one of those axles are steering they do have a pretty big model it's the 380 i believe it's a tri-axle and two of those axles are actually steering you kind of need to once you go up to three axles otherwise you'll be pulling some of the wheels sideways pretty bad but uh, this one doesn't need it pulls perfectly fine the way it is it's got the floor chain drive so some manure spreaders have like uh, kind of a wall in the front that'll push the manure out the back this one's just got the floor chain you can see it underneath here that's what that is it's got the bars and those just move over the floor that does work pretty good unless you heap up too much straw pack on top and then it kind of hinges on the on the door at the back there sometimes an issue if you're not careful about it but probably the best feature about this manure spreader is the vertical beaters this manure spreader does a phenomenal job spreading manure finely over the field you can run into some issues sometimes with some horizontal beater manure spreaders where they spread that straw pack over the field and you end up with a bunch of chunks of straw pack like a foot by a foot by a foot big this manure spreader has been uh, solid for us the only breakdowns that i can really ever remember a hydraulic hose broke last year and one other thing that happened to us the gearbox at the back here we had to completely replace this is the gearbox that drives these two vertical beaters so what happened to it we just never drained the oil and there's seals in between uh you know where this beater hooks up to those gears that are supposed to keep the moisture out but after a couple of years probably six or seven moisture got into that gearbox the oil got pushed out i guess somehow and the gear started rusting and then one spring i was spreading and then all of a sudden i heard a gnarly crunching sound from the manure spreader and the beaters quit working so we had to remove that entire gearbox assembly and replace it completely that was our fault so other than that it's been a solid manure spreader Before we end today's video, the welders, they were out here fabricating up the gates for the new footpath wall. So I figured I'd show you guys that quickly. We put the concrete walls here and we had to get some custom gates fabricated and they did that today. These are all full stainless. Hopefully this is temporary, but you can see the hinges, the bolts, everything that connects it to this concrete wall is also stainless. It's exposed to that copper sulfate footpath and that is very corrosive to metal it welded out the posts that were there in just two and a half years so you can see this one's already wearing down pretty good too already but uh, that's going to be a issue for down the road so yeah they just custom fab these two gates right here they look pretty awesome and we also had them do a little bit of work further up in front of the sort gate here we also had them do some work in front of the sort gate here Starting right here is the sort gate and we used to just have an angled gate to that post over there but We had another post drilled into the concrete here and a little bit more alley built in front of the sort gate We think this is going to improve the accuracy of it uh, We believe you need at least a few meters of alley in front of your sort gate As soon as the cow sticks her head in front of the sensor here That will sometimes activate the sort gate. It'll swing open a cow will get spooked and she'll back out again so the idea with the longer alley here in front of the sort gate you have this one way and before they trigger that sort gate they'll be locked in here and hopefully like that the plan is it's going to improve the accuracy we should have built it like this in the first place but we just didn't know any better so hopefully that's going to help us out as well but yeah we're always trying to improve stuff uh, we got some cool stuff planned for the summer as well some new expansion stuff but uh, yeah, that is going to be it for today's video. If you enjoyed, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. Check out the Instagram, at SASDutchKid. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.